Hi folks. Hope you're well. Oh. Ah, blessed sleep. I've had two good night sleeps. Two good nights sleep. Much needed. And I'm uh, feeling my energy returning after hitting a bit of a low, a bit of a lull. Um, so yeah, it's uh, always good to go to bed early and get a, a nice restful, restorative sleep. So feeling good today. And uh, I just thought I'd say a few words around shame because Karen, Karen Higgins was in the hive on Monday talking about her um, narcissistic ex-partner and how that affected her self-esteem and there was a lot of shame involved there. And uh, also Jackie, Jackie Bennis has done various talks around the inner child and narcissism and how shame can play into that. And toxic shame is a very bad and very powerful thing. So, um, Brené Brown, if you're familiar with her, talks a lot about shame. She's a shame researcher. And I've uh, been listening to her latest podcast, which is called Unlocking Us. Highly recommended if you like a podcast. And she's been talking about the difference between shame and guilt, which I think I've mentioned before. And in a nutshell, I'd say that uh, guilt is when we feel bad for something that we've done and shame and in particular toxic shame is when we feel bad about who we are so um, Brené Brown was giving some really useful and very touching tips around parenting and um, how we talk to ourselves as well around shame and how we can avoid shaming ourselves and shaming those we love, especially our children. So, um, one tip that she gave, which I'm going to try and build into my own little household, is no name calling is allowed. So if you see any behaviour going on within your household, with your children, with your loved ones, whoever it is, you are not allowed to say, you are stupid, or you are clumsy, or you are not good enough, whatever it is. You're not allowed to label someone with any kind of negative name. So instead, you can look at the behaviour and say, OK, so that was, that was a selfish decision, or that was an unwise choice you made, or, OK, you did a slightly clumsy thing, because you're human, you're imperfect. But there's a big difference between making a mistake, doing something that's clumsy, and being a bad person, being a mistake, being clumsy as, as a being. So it's really useful to separate the behaviour from the qualities of that person. And I found myself doing this with my children sometimes, where maybe something's happened which pressed a button for me and uh, I will sometimes get a little bit cross and in my anger say something which attacks my children, it shames my children, saying, um, making the behaviour into a characteristic of that individual. So. Um, trying to think of an example now. Uh, I can't think of a real example, but let's say, <coughs> let's say that maybe uh, your child stays in bed until 11 o'clock and when they get up they play on their phone or they watch the television for two hours and they haven't done their chores or they've not done the homework. So you might say to them, you're so lazy, you're a lazy person. And uh, that is labelling the person. 
has a negative quality. It's name calling and it's shaming. And that person will come to believe that. They will come to believe that they are lazy and they will feel ashamed. And that toxic shame can follow them into adulthood. And that will be the message that they say to themselves. The voice of the parent becomes the inner voice of the child. Because they, uh, they pedestalise us, especially in those first seven years of life. The parent is God. They are infallible and everything they say is true to the child. So that child will grow up thinking, I'm a lazy person, or I'm a bad person, or I'm not good enough. And that will very often follow through into adulthood and affects their relationships, their self-esteem, their confidence, their working lives, and could also impact who they choose as a life partner. And uh, they may end up choosing someone who replicates the behaviour of that shaming parent. So you might get uh, a lady, for example, choosing a male partner who replicates those critical qualities of their parent, their dad, who uh, shamed them and told them they were not enough. And maybe that's part of the reason people end up in a string of narcissistic relationships and don't really realise it until, like Karen, you've been through many years of suffering that abuse and you realise, gosh, hang on a minute, am I really a bad person? Don't I deserve more than this? And that can be the beginning of healing when you start to question, surely I'm not bad, I deserve more than this. And you can start to build up your self-esteem and awareness around the goodness of your soul rather than the toxic shame of the badness that you have interjected from those parenting messages around you are not good enough. So, one way to avoid that, avoid shame, is not to label people, not to... Um, say you are bad in any way whether that's laziness or clumsiness or selfishness whatever it is concentrate on the behavior instead and say okay so that decision you made perhaps that was rather selfish of you and that person can then go and reflect on that and think mm, okay so yeah maybe it was selfish and next time i will do something kinder and less selfish it doesn't mean I am a selfish person, it just means I made a decision which had some selfish consequences. And yeah, what applies to other people, communicating with other people, such as our children, also applies to ourselves. So the way we talk to ourselves, as I've said several times on the Hive, really becomes how we think about ourselves. So if we keep telling ourselves, I am clumsy, I am selfish, I am lazy, I am a bad person, we will come to believe that. And our reality then is limited by our own beliefs about ourselves. If we think we're a bad person, we won't deserve good things to happen to us. And if something good does happen to us, we'll think, oh gosh, this can't be right. And um, we might deny it or sab sabotage ourselves so that those good things actually collapse whether it's a good relationship or a new job opportunity or anything anything at all we can just uh, end up saying no nope, on some level I know I don't deserve this because I am a bad person so I'm going to possibly subconsciously sabotage this so that it goes wrong I've been there myself I've uh, I grew up feeling that I was not good enough. That's the message I got in childhood. I wasn't heard. My needs were not as important as other people's needs. So I grew up feeling that um, 
I didn't deserve to have my needs met. I didn't deserve to be heard. I wasn't important enough. You are not enough and you are imperfect. Yes, I am imperfect. Aren't we all? So I have found myself at various times in the past having opportunities with relationships and work and other things and I have unconsciously, subconsciously, sabotaged those opportunities, setting myself up to fail. Uh, because on some level I didn't believe that I deserved that good fortune or positive outcome. And what I've been doing over the past few years of therapy and personal development and spiritual development and such like is to unpick that message that I received in childhood and uh, challenge the truth of it and instead come to believe that I am worthy, I am good enough, oh yes I am, and uh, that toxic shame that I had around my sense of self is being diluted gradually. It's like uh, a glass of muddy water. If you imagine how how I saw myself, you could get a, a tumbler and put it in a, a muddy puddle and that's kind of how I saw myself, that toxic shame. And then over the years, I've been putting that glass underneath a, uh, a crystal clear stream, which has been trickling into that glass and gradually diluting those toxins and as the glass overflowed, over time, the water is becoming purer and purer. And that kind of reflects my, my belief in myself and my, my pure soul. And we all have a, a pure soul, which is, is good. We're all good people. We are not bad people. We sometimes make bad decisions, that's all. And in fact, I wouldn't want to, I don't want to say that. I don't want to say we're good or bad. Uh, so that's a bit dualistic. I believe we all have pure souls and at times due to what's happened to us in childhood and what we carry into adulthood as unhelpful beliefs and unhelpful behaviour patterns can lead us to um, behaviours which are unhelpful. But in a sense those unhelpful behaviours, whether it's feeling bad about ourselves or getting involved in uh, destructive, toxic, narcissistic relationships or being that person ourself even that's, that can be very helpful it can be really helpful to go through those challenges in order to come to some realisation and some healing so yeah, I don't want to label it as good and bad it's just a process so there we go that's, uh, that's my musings pinched from Brené Brown mostly this morning. Unlocking Us is the podcast I've been listening to. Highly recommended. And um, yeah, if you want to share anything yourself around how you feel about yourself, whether you have shame around who you are, you feel you're not good enough, you don't deserve, um, you're a bad person, have you, got to, have you had a message from childhood that you're lazy, selfish, uh, boring, I don't know, anything like that. How is it sitting with you now? Are you still carrying that message or have you worked it through? Have you diluted that shame? And how do you, how do you relate to others? Your partner, your children, your other loved ones, are you finding that you're labelling them, name calling them? And are they perhaps then feeling shamed? by your behaviour and could you do it a different way? So the commitment I'm trying to make to myself is no name calling in the Wollstone home household. I should be talking to my children about this later um, so we can we can point out the behaviour but we are not to label the person as anything negative. I can label them as 
loving beautiful souls which I hope I do every day and uh, yeah those mistakes that I make sometimes around um, getting cross and labeling them negatively we all do it well maybe most of us do it maybe not all of us but if we do it we can either get called out by our children and hold their hands up and go, yep sorry or we can calm ourselves down and then review our own behavior and if we find that okay i've broken the house rule here i've name called i have shamed my child we go and apologize and put it right and say actually you're not a bad lazy incompetent fool <laughs> you're a beautiful person who just made an unhelpful choice so there we go that's that's it for today i hope you enjoy your thursday this evening at eight o'clock we've got sam ward back in the hive to talk about parenting with a mental health issue this was uh, delayed from two or three weeks ago where sam wasn't feeling great she's uh, well hopefully she'll be okay for tonight and uh tomorrow jaffa and steve are doing the first of their tools for living your life 10 30 in the morning nlp stuff around achieving goals improving relationships how you see yourself and how you operate in the world i think that'll be really useful really interesting i'm going to leave it there because the wind's picking up and i've run out of things to say so have a good thursday and hopefully see you later take care bye